social pressure. You're kind of been standing out on an island out here in southeastern <laughs> Idaho. And, and in pockets, we have innovators around, but talk to us about some of the social pressure. There is that social pressure, but, but you know that a lot of guys don't say anything, but when they drive by and they see some of your failures and you know you got weeds this tall because, because of what you're trying to do, it, it, it looks like it's a, a total failure, but, but there's a lot to be learned from that process. And, and so, you know, having the belief system going into it is probably the strongest thing and, and I guess lack of fear. Yeah. Lack of fear of failure is, is key as well. It's kind of the definition of an innovator. Right, right. I, I unpack having the belief system for me. to tell, tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. When I first started out in my journey, I was really big on cover crops, right? I, I fell in love with the cover crops, but I didn't do a whole lot different. And so you could see some value, you know, you, you, you plant some of these, these, uh, these oilseed radishes that really focus on nematodes. There's a lot of value there. But then when you don't do anything different, you don't gain anything. Well, it's just an added, added expense. Like. Exactly. You're adding something to it. The thing that really drove me was the fact that when I, when I just mowed it and then I didn't work the ground, just came in with a beater and, and mowed this down. And then I came back in the spring and it's like, man, I can't, I, I could not get on the ground because it had so much more moisture. And so, you know, it took a little bit more time to dry out, but then when I planted my, my, my wheat right into that residue, the cost savings in water, the cost savings in ground prep, and, and the, the amazing emergence that I had is what made me keep trying. And so that's why I started that process about, you know, about 10 years ago of, okay, I gotta take a farm completely out of production and do nothing but experiments on. And it's, it's led me to keep experimenting. I mean, I'm, I'm doing 150 acre plot experiments now, um, just based on what I've seen in, in, in that, little, that little eight acre or 10 acre field there. I mean, as we saw this morning, th those earthworms there, I mean, you go out into all, all this other ground. I mean, if you find one, you're, you're pretty happy, right? And, you know, we found 78 this morning and in, in this ground here, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And so, so you, you know, you see that, can I sit here today and tell you how profitable it's made me? No, I, I can't answer that question. But what I can say is, is I'm growing 150 bushel wheat, only irrigating five times. To, and to put that in perspective, you know, that's about 10 inches of water. So that's about half of what it conventionally Half of what I typically do, yes. Okay. Going to your, your cash crops, you, you're still uh, um, farming sugar beets and potatoes? Yes, sir. So, so yes, sir. What are you seeing in terms, are you seeing different yields, different qualities? Are you seeing any change there? Well, um, I'm going to pat myself on the back here for a minute because it was pretty phenomenal. <laughs> but in, in uh, 2007, uh, with some of these practices, I, I grew some sugar beets that were comparable to what they're growing on the, the, the western side of the state, which has never been done before. So to answer your question directly, there is a direct, a direct yield response to some of these practices. And the biggest one that I'm seeing is preservation of moisture and also the, the reduction of tillage. The more you till, the greater the need is for tillage. I mean, it, it's crazy. You would think that if you went in and, and ripped your ground open, you know, with a deep till ripper, that, oh man, you solved your problem. But what you're doing is you're opening that soil up, you're putting, you're putting dirt on top of dirt, and then when, that, when the rain comes, it turns it into concrete. And so then it requires you to go back out there and do it again and again. And it's just a, it's a, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you know, you start and it just takes you keep further along and and I, I I don't have the money as a producer to continue it, it's expensive running tractors back and forth you know diesel fuel labor just the cost of equipment and so that that, that was my biggest motivating factor to, to continue the process but you know potatoes and sugar beets they paid a lot of bills I'm not not uh, not down in any of them because they they've they've helped me quite a quite a bit so. yeah.